Good morning, everybody. Time for another Tom and Shane podcast. And uh, joining us, of course, uh, as he does every month, is uh, the money guru, Mike McCormick. Uh, many years a talk radio and financial expert. He's a regular guest on podcasts like this one. <laughs> We're happy to have him. He's a small business owner, uh, McCormick Financial Advisors, and we'll put the link to uh, his website in the description below uh, once we process the film uh, or process the thing, whatever it is. And uh, he's a specialty personal wealth management company. He's a Yale graduate. He's the father of two lovely girls, and uh, he's a family of runners, And uh, which uh, I guess if you make the wrong uh, uh investment mike you got to run from the, <laughs> from the investors so, so i guess that training comes in handy so, slow and steady slow and steady, steady tom all right well mike is here we want to talk about uh, mike how to retire rich uh, mm. only uh only two of the three of us here are retired uh, that would make you the odd man out so or shane and i are both living the good life so uh <laughs> You want to tell the folks who would like to live uh, like Tom and Shane how to do it? Well, the irony, of course, is that you guys should be paving the way. We so should I be think doing that, this, huh? I feel like I'm getting set up. I'll put a few things out there um, and set the ground rules for, for a good discussion today. And it's great to be here, Tom. I always enjoy being on with you and Shane. Uh, and, and I do also need to interject that as a financial advisor, as a fiduciary for my clients, there's a big disclaimer that says, Whatever I say can't really be used uh, against me. So, of course, consult your own financial advisor, consult your own tax professional. Uh, and, of course, if you like to, feel free to give me a ring or Tom or Shane. Uh, we're always available and really appreciate you guys listening. So retiring uh, in style is really is what Tom led me into here. Um, there's three things and and we can go deep on each one of these things. Uh, but there's the prepare stage. Uh, which I think that we'll have a real lively discussion because it, there's things that you need to recognize about yourself when you prepare. Uh, the next one is plan. And when you're planning, uh, it helps to use an expert. There's a lot of information out there these days on the interweb. Uh, and then the last one is prune. And so with every good plan that we have, uh, things change. Things change uh, exterior circumstances from tax rates to stock market returns uh, to things about your own life, to sickness, health, uh, life and goals. And so recognize that whatever it is that you set up, there will never be this autopilot thing where you just get to say, Jesus, take the wheel. Everything's honky dory. That, that hopefully comes, but there's always times when you need to say, okay, it's time to just review. Am I on track? Uh, do I need to make changes from where I went to? Um, and in terms of, of when you should start, who is this podcast for? This is for everybody. This is for anybody that's thinking about retirement. Uh, so with that, I think that the, uh, you know, we can start deep into the concepts that I have to say, but let's start with a, a question right now, which is for Tom and Shane who are retired, why don't you guys come out each with just one simple tip uh, that you want to make sure that anybody listening about how to retire in style is going to be able to take away with before I start filling their ears with, with mumbo jumbo, right? All right, Shane, uh, take that away. Well, I think that uh, it's always important to uh, look at the assets that you have and you have to put together a, uh, you know, a pro and, and, and uh, conventional plan of when you want to uh, uh, probably diverse yourself of, of assets at, at, you know, at certain periods in your life. And so that you're already prepared for it, you've planned for it, you've thought about it, you've thought it through. And it's not something that you just decide and go out and do. You, you always want to prepare for everything that Mike is talking about in the long term um, as you go through life. Not So you know you what to anticipate. Um, it, it especially comes down to things like um, RSPs, RS, you know, the, your retirement savings plans that you have and things of that nature. And, and the other things that you may have purchased as assets for long-term investment. So that, that would be my, my advice. Just put together a plan, anticipate when you're going to divest yourself of assets. How long did it take you to retire, Shane? Uh, you, you, did you set a date and then work toward that date or did the no, date I, just come I, and you said, I'm done? No, I just 
I just, <clears throat> uh, I've just gone through the process uh, without any concern about being making a decision to retire because I've worked basically for myself, you know, for since uh, 2005. And so, yeah, not not an issue. Yeah. Uh, the wife and I probably started, Mike, I think around, um, I don't know, when I was 55, probably. Uh, the biggest thing that we had to do was retire debt. We had to get the house payment done. Uh, we had to get car payments all done. <clears throat> Uh, credit cards all clear. Uh, we wanted to retire debt free, uh, so that was our big uh, uh, our our big step. Um, and uh, we had a seven year plan to do that, and uh, got it done. And that's how we uh, how that's that's how we did it. We did set a date on on uh, you know when uh, we were going to do this, and. Um, We've never looked back. It's the planning is the planning's the part. It really is, you know, that um, but I, I think debt is the biggest thing that holds people back when they retire is that you if you're saddled with a lot of debt uh, and you don't have the income. Now, when you do retire, you've got a lot less expenses. We're not driving to work every day, for example. So our gas is less. Uh, you know, we're, we're eating at home more, but we're not buying lunches out, which is better. So there are a lot of advantages to retirement where you can save, uh, where your daily expenses are not as much. And, and you guys, great points, super, super excellent uh, follow through on what I was hoping, because you did talk about preparing, getting actually the facts, getting the budget, getting, getting, listing all your debt, uh, it's so critical for people to every once in a while, even if they don't go to the next step of planning, to get an awareness in this day of uh, the day and age of identity theft. There could be things going on with your credit that you don't know. So filling out some form of a personal financial statement and a personal financial statement is the sort of ubiquitous uh, passport that the financial industry uses. You can Google it online and you'll be able to find a form that you can fill out. Uh, I recommend that you just you know, do a spreadsheet or a, or a little tabulated list. Uh, the sophisticated programs sort of they grab your attention and then they grab your data and then then you might not have it where you want. But going and listing, how much are we spending? Did you know that you can call your credit card companies? I put all my expenses on my credit card and I call them or I go online and I can print out a detailed report of my spending for an entire year. I don't need to guess how much I need in retirement. I just need to look and see how much I'm spending right now. Uh, of course, there's some expenses that are going to change. Those are pretty easy to accommodate. Uh, but see all the bills you have, see where all your debt is. And then, of course, bring in all your assets. What do you have? How far along are you in your career? Have you actually saved up 2 to $4 million and you can retire tomorrow? Awesome. Awesome. Write it down. Uh, and if you're not there yet, that's where Tom talks about having a detailed plan on how to get there. And in terms of having a detailed plan, that has to do with rearranging your balance sheet to get into that gold zone that you're at. And Tom mentioned paying down debt. Paying down debt is something that we don't talk about these days because money is so cheap, right? It doesn't make doesn't make anybody money except for you to pay down debt. The people that are loaning you the money don't want you to do it. They want you to borrow more and pay them more. Uh, paying down debt in today's environment well, if you're in a high tax bracket, you can take a 3% mortgage and turn that into a 4% rate of return to pay off your own home mortgage. Yes, of course, the stock market's done much better than that in the past, but we can't count on that, can we? You can count on a guaranteed return of 4% when you're in a high income tax bracket and you pay off a 3% loan. One of the best things that you can do that makes you feel better because it's a safe investment move. You're investing in yourself. Other things that when you're planning that you're doing is you're taking assets maybe out of things that would be uh, not performing and moving them into other areas. This might mean taking more risk, but you can do things to offset that, like maybe holding more liquid cash in your emergency savings account. So when you work with a professional planner, we're going to take a whole look at your entire net worth. We're going to take a look at your entire earnings capacity, and we're going to figure out the ways that we can get you to that goal that you want to achieve. But then the last part is really, where does that sit you? How does your gut sit with that amount of risk and volatility? This is something in the prepare stage that you really need to check and say, you know, I know I'm a conservative person 
or I know I'm a risky person. Um, and then the pruning part is just acknowledging that uh, just like with anything in life, the best laid plans are achieved when you follow through with them, but it doesn't mean that they don't need little nudges on either sides like this. So Tom, when you've been in retirement, you had this plan and it sounds fairy tale almost that you, you decided you were going to get here. You made the commitment and you had the discipline to actually follow through and make those debt payments and put money into savings, commit it to your Roth IRAs and allow it to grow. But there must have been some things that you and your wife had to talk about making changes about. Um, I know that there's been a couple of health issues for you guys. Mm -hmm. How have those bumps along the road affected your plan for you? Well, it was it, it was tough. Um, you know, we we had to change our lifestyle quite a bit. Um, you know, we cut we cut the cable, uh, we cut the paper, uh, any any expense, you know, uh, any expense that was out there that we didn't absolutely have to have. Uh, we cut it out. And, um, you know, I've always said that if you're willing to live for a short period of time, like most people won't, you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. And that was what that was what was driving us. The uh, you talked about the 4%. That's kind of the sweet spot that if you have a retirement fund, you should be able to take 4% out of that every year. And the principal, you know, stays pretty much the same. And, uh, you know, there's no guarantee of that, as Mike talked about with the market. You never know what things are going to go or where they're going to go. The other thing that we did as we got older, as I said, I started planning this at 55. The other thing that we did is because of our age and um, we looked at more risky investment. Uh, because of our age, you know, we got nothing to lose, <laughs> but, you know, uh, but we, we went about 70, 30 risk, I think, uh, Mike. Uh, oh, you did. Uh, yeah. We went pretty high. Um, well, let's unpack, uh, if we can talk about that a bit, Tom. Yeah, well, the return, if it happens is good. If it doesn't, you know, you're kind of SOL. To have 70% of your of your investments in, in stocks has been a, a beautiful choice. We've had an yeah. incredible long bull market and stock returns uh, that have just just exceeded anybody's uh, expectations. And, and we're not talking about where it's going from here. But you would not have been able to participate in that unless you made a commitment to have some risk in your life. And so the way we talk to clients about this is imagine three buckets of money that one's close, one's medium far away, and one's almost out of reach. You can barely touch it. That money that's out barely out of, out of reach, uh, that would be your IRA and other long-term retirement assets that you can put at that level of risk, knowing that in any 10-year period, the stock market hasn't lost. So if you can just hang on, well, then you'll get that return that we've been enjoying. And the way to hang on is to uh, what hold on loosely, probably one of your top set hits uh, back in the day, Tom. Um, so by having that money distant, you also in turn have money that is close to you that is providing comfort. And that can be in the form of, um, no debt. That's a comfort item right there. You have resources that you could potentially tap into if you needed to, uh, but also having some level of opportunistic cash and this stage of the cycle or at this stage of your lives, having money that you can deploy to fill a healthcare need or, maybe even help a grandchild out. Um, it's important to have money that's still liquid and accessible. So by bucketing this money, this is one of the ways that the planners get you comfortable saying, well, overall, we're not at a lot of risk. And here's why, is because we can meet any needs that might happen in the next year, next three years, and we're not at risk of you outliving your resources because you're still recognizing that having money out at risk is gonna serve you best. And you're working with somebody or you've got the right discipline uh, to not make a bad decision. And Shane, I think that you have the right discipline in making decisions. How would you caution people in, in retirement from making poor decisions? We just saw uh, Mr. Madoff passed away uh, and it turned out that he was preying on mostly middle-class people, normal people that might be watching this podcast uh, had trusted this person and made a catast catastrophic error in uh in judgment and and got very unlucky in the context too but um i can't speak to uh, to all aspects of human behavior but when you're looking at at uh 
all the risks that we are today. Uh, how do you manage, how do you make good decisions or how do you recommend our listeners manage their expectations and good decision making? Anytime you invest, as we've discussed, it's a risk. So your anticipation of success is welcome, but there's always a downside to it as well. So you have to have a, you know, a pro and con list with your investments. Uh, what are you willing to accept as a loss? Because your first loss is your best. And secondly, when you, what kind of a profit are you prepared to accept? Um, but it's not, it's not just the importance of that profit that has to be part of the decision is what would you plan to do with the money if you decide to take that profit and, and where do you go with it? As you get older, the plan should remain the same. It, the, the key is to reduce risk on a long-term basis as, as much as you can. Um, that, that's why things of uh, looking at maybe there's no opportunity to urban or primary purchase of real estate or secondary uh, pri you know, cities like Bozeman. So small town, you know, there are lots of small towns out there that have lots of very inexpensive properties that you could look at that over 20, 30 you know, years could be a fantastic investment. But the difficulty you have about that is, is it near where you live and, and managing the property and, and so forth. So it's a matter of making these determinations in the plan that you start off with. And as you move through the decades of your life, um, you, you follow the choices that you planned ahead to make. And uh, it, it sounds simple but it's actually complex to sit down and make that decision the, the hardest thing for people to decide is to sell anything <laughs> because you know you know we well, tom and i always laugh about the fact that is it something i want or something i need well yeah. you know once you own it you, you, you want to keep it right yeah. <laughs> and you know i'm, I'm of the um, uh, you know the baby boomer generation and you know i have shirts that are 30 years old you know yeah. not just because they they're still viable but because I just can't get rid of anything. So, you know, it's just being practical, common sense, and knowing that you cannot um, take any additional risk as you move through your life. You want to reduce risk. That's true. Uh, Wendy has the right idea, uh, Mike and Shane. Uh, what you don't spend, you don't have to earn. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. So thanks, Wendy, for weighing in today for, with us. And uh, yeah, she's exactly right. That uh, uh, Yeah, as we were saying, paying off debt is giving yourself a raise. Uh, you know, I mean, you can getting that prepare. Yeah. yeah, getting that prepare uh, step really handled thoroughly uh, sometimes can require um, the use of great programs that you can find like mints.com. Uh, this is something where you can put in all your credit cards and we talked about how it can budget your expenses, but it can also help you with all your debt. Uh, Dave Ramsey has wonderful tips on debt repayment. Uh, I recommend anybody that wants to pay off debt, go and consult his steps. Um, there's a lot of resources out there but not as many as you want. And the resources never, you know, to watch out for fraudulent uh, salespeople is one thing. Um, to watch out for, oh, aggressive salespeople is another, right? Uh, if, you, if you walk into the booth butcher, you're gonna get meat, but if you walk into the supermarket, you might get a balanced diet. So careful what store you're walking into. If you're walking into a, a credit counseling company that makes money off of counseling people about their credits, um, they're probably going to not help you. They're going to make more money off you. If you're going into a, a mortgage company, they're probably going to want to loan you more money for your house. If you're walking to a stockbroker's office, they're probably going to want to sell, sell you some stocks. That's, that's what I would guess. <laughs> um, so having that discipline and, and almost being able to remove yourself from your emotions and your histories and take an objective view like you guys have uh, seems to lead to the most success. Um, and like our listener commented, you know, spending less, um, it, it can be really refreshing. It can be liberating. Uh, and sometimes it can be easier than you might think. Yeah. Well, the one thing that we did too, uh, we, uh, I created a budget out of, uh, Excel, uh, a spreadsheet budget. And that's helped immensely because, you know, you know, you know, you've got utilities, you know what those are, you got insurance, you know what that is. And, um, you know, if there are credit card payments, you have those and how much money's coming in and uh, how much you have in savings and all of that. And, um, 
you know, when you look at paying bills and everything, you say, okay, well, I've got to pay these and you know, this and that, but I don't have uh, I don't have car, uh, car license every month, but I've got it in there. Yeah. You know, because it, it's going to come up property tax. I don't have it in there, but it, or I have it in there, but it doesn't come up every month. So, um, you know, you know what always gets along. me is, is new tires for the car. Well, you know? that too. <laughs> Five hundred dollar bill that happens every few years that you yeah. completely forgotten about, and you're like, "Where did all the money go this month?" Oh, I had to get new tires. One of the single most important uh, things that you ma need to learn to manage um, is food, and because it's directly involved in every day of your life. Mm. So, food costs are important. It, you know, when you look at the costs uh, on a daily basis, say ten dollars a day. You know, 30 days, that's $300 for one person in a month. You know, two people, it's 600 You know, if it's $20 a day, all of a sudden, you know, you've jumped to $1,200 for two people in a month. So, you know, is $20 a day enough for you to buy the food that you should anticipate to live on during the course of a month? Certainly should be. Uh, but you still have to go out and anticipate what you buy to, you know, on a basis of $20 a day, you know, because... It, some people may have three three meals a day. Some people like me, I just basically have two and eat some raw vegetables, you know, during the day or an apple. But, you know, the bottom line is I have my food costs down to exactly what I want it to be, which is about eight eight dollars uh, a day, um, you know, four to three to four dollars for, um, you know, breakfast and, and then four dollars uh, for dinner. And, and so it, food's a very important thing. <coughs> is something you can budget and you, it's not a difficult thing to budget, but you need to include it in your plans. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's uh, uh, excellent advice. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. Hey, if, uh, in case you didn't know, uh, we are using StreamYard, uh, Mike, uh, to bring these uh, episodes to you. And there's a free version of that. You can get information about that in the description down below. And also, if you're watching us on uh, YouTube, hey, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. You'll never miss another podcast with Tom and Shane and Mike. And whenever we have Mike here, of course. And like us and leave a comment because, well, that helps grow our channel. And if you'd like to uh, support us, we will support you. Shane and I will be happy to give you our personal input. Um, just uh, check out uh, Patreon below. We've got three levels you can support us at, and uh, you get all kinds of perks and things for doing that. And uh, we hope that you will take advantage of doing that. And of course, don't forget TomandChain.com. Lots of articles and uh, tips and things over there as well. So, um, so Mikey. Uh, final I thoughts. Got, final the, thoughts here. What do you think? Well, from a practical purpose, everybody wants to know how much do you need? When can I retire? How much do I need? Right? Simple questions to speak, difficult questions to answer. The biggest feature in that discussion is: Will you be buying your own health care? Uh, Medicare works. It works for millions and millions of people. Uh, it still has expenses getting the supplement coverage and we, you know, different show, Google it, that sort of thing. But to retire before 65 means that you'll be supporting your own health care during some of the more expensive times of your life. Make sure you have accurate numbers because those are significant and they really are the main reason why we see people working uh, longer these days. Uh, even if you have a couple million dollars fears about healthcare expenses from just normal routine visits all the way to the feared rest home uh, are what keep people up at night. So don't be surprised when that becomes your, your fear as well, because that is the number one concern out living uh, and out expending your resources due to healthcare and becoming a burden on loved ones. Um, there's a few things we can do to help with that. Uh, all we got time to do is right now is just name it out there. So be careful. Yeah. Well, the other thing we need to mention about Medicare is uh, if you have not paid into it, you don't get it. Uh, if you're, you know, if the wife has been a stay at home mom and raised the kids and didn't work, uh, you know, you need to plan that into your uh, expenses because you're going to have to buy Medicare. And it's around 400 bucks a month, I think, plus a supplement mm -hmm. because uh, Medicare is only going to cover 80 percent of whatever the costs of A and B. And there's also D, the drug uh, thing. So you got to pay for that as well. 
And uh, if you're late signing up for any of those, then there's a penalty for the rest of your days for not signing up on it. So, <laughs> so make sure if you're reaching retirement age, uh, make sure you know the ins and outs of Medicare. Uh, get some. Uh, uh, make sure you get a health uh, uh, supplement plan in place. Um, you know, and that also has to go into your budget uh, every right. month because that's going to be a monthly uh, in and out payment. So, forever. Right. Yeah, Shane. Any final thoughts before we uh, say goodbye to Mike? I, we've covered everything well on this topic today. It's great to see you, Mike. Thanks for joining us. Really much appreciated. Yeah. Oh, it's fun. Thanks for thanks for allowing me, guys. All right. Mike McCormick, uh, McCormick Financial Services. We'll put Mike's uh, information in the description below. Uh, once we process this, it'll be about an hour or so to get it up on the air uh, uh, with the descriptions and everything uh, down below. But um, obviously, it's there live right now because <laughs> you're watching us live. So we appreciate that very much. So. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, let's see. Uh, today is Thursday. We are on the radio Saturday. Uh, Shane and I uh, will be on the radio Saturday, so you will absolutely want to check that out because, uh, hey, we're there. Uh, go to KMMSAM.com. We're on the air 8 to 11. You can listen anywhere in the world. No credit card, no information needed, nothing to sign up for, nothing to join. Uh, all you got to do is show up. And if you missed any part of this show and want to hear the rest of it, all of our past shows are at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast over there, and you'll be taken over there immediately. And we thank uh, Mike very much for being here, of course. Always a pleasure to uh, chat with Mike. Shane, absolutely uh, always here. Greatest co-host in radio and video history. And uh, half man, half amazing, as I call him. So we're happy to have him here every week. And uh, we will see everybody. Uh, uh, we'll talk to you on the radio on Saturday. We'll see you on the podcast next Tuesday. Mike, thanks so much again. And uh, we are out of here. <laughs>